Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to start by giving a shout out to the YouTube creator Iced Images. It was her gingerbread house pop-up card that inspired me to make this to share with you today. As you can see when you open it up, up pops a delightful little house. And I can also assure you that it is not difficult to do. It's one of the easiest pop-up cards you'll probably ever make. So if you want to learn how to do it, stick with me and I'll show you how. For the card blank, I've got this piece that I've cut to five and three quarters by eleven and a half, so that's going to make a five and three quarter inch square card. If you already have a pre-purchased six by six card, then you just need to trim it to the five and three quarter inch size or indeed you could just leave it as a six by six and all you need to do now then is put this into the scoreboard and score it at five and three quarters fold and burnish next i have my mats i've got three of these two are going to be on the inside and one is going to be on the front cover i'm going to use this brown for the front cover and then i will have on top of this uh, more of my layers and i'll try to do this before i actually start to build the house inside the pop-up because the bulk of that might prevent this from sticking down um, properly. So I'm going to put this down first. And then I'm going to do the inside. And I'm only going to do a matting layer on the inside. I'm not going to do a pattern paper or anything like that. So I'll only have the one inside like this. If you want to add another layer on top, then you would cut that piece at five and one quarter inch square. So let's get these down next. Front, I've got another piece that is five and a quarter inches square. Which is going to go here. I'm going to use some of these distress inks on here. I'm going to use my broken china ink. I'm just going to go lightly across here. Right, like that. Then I'm going to bring in this peeled paint. Very subtle. So I think what I'll do is just go around the edge here. This ink pad, this is gathered twigs. Just to ink up those edges a little bit. Building on top of this, I've got some die cuts here. These are from a Gemini, just by Crafter's Companion. It's like the die set I have here.
I'm just going to come back in here with a bit more of this broken china. So, cut out some grass from my scan and cut, just using an SVG file that I found. I'm just going to place that across there, and I'll use some more of this distress ink to give it some colour. I can just trim this as needed. So I'll put that along the bottom there. And I'll just cut off the excess. this down on the front and I'll probably just add my sentiment towards the end because I'm really not sure what I'm going to use yet. Let's just get this in place and then we can start working on the pop-up. come back to that if there's anything else we need to add on but we've got the bulk of it on there now so we've on to the inside now and for the house I've got this piece which I've cut at 12 inches by 4 inches you could if you like just use an A4 sheet that means you could cut it at 11 and 3 quarters by 4. It's just that your glue tab is going to be a little bit small. It's only going to be a quarter of an inch rather than half an inch as it will be with this. So, we need to put this to the scoreboard. Set that aside for a moment. And on the long side, you want to score it at... three and three quarters at four and three quarters at five and three quarters at nine and a half nine and a half ten and a half and 11 and a half and then that will give us that half inch glue tab there now turn to the four inch side and score it now if you have a directional paper where you're uh, it's going to make a difference as to what is the top or the bottom of your house you want the top of your house to be the half inch score line, so half an inch, and then the top will be where this three inch score line is, so you'll have a one inch tab. So if this were directional, I would have to be sure that I had this on the bottom, which is the one inch, and that is where the half inch is. So that's what you need to do. 
some cutting that also needs to be done. If I do it from this side, might be able to see it a bit better. What you're going to do is you're going to, of course, make your, your tabs here. You can angle cut those. You need to remove this entire rectangle. Now it's made up of these two squares and that rectangle there. So those are going to come off. You'll leave this intact, the large rectangle. And you'll remove these two squares here and you'll leave this in place. And you can angle those tabs as well. And you'll do the same on this side. These are what will be removed and again or three of those at the end. So I'll turn it this way so I can show you. Just go up to there. Right? And then you can go ahead and just miter that as you cut into it, or you could just cut up and then miter it. Right? So we've got these two that need to come out. Cut up along there. I'll remove that score line. I can write that and that as well. Right? And we can do this one on the end. And now we'll turn it to the other side. We're going to up there and we can remove this I'll just do it this way for you so you can see and then you've got these tabs here like that you've got this one you can angle that one angle that one remove this piece. So you have this now. You've got your half inch tab at the top and your one inch at the bottom. Cut that one as well. And now to fold it, We've got these, got this glue tab here, and want to come up with a mountain fold, and then a valley, and then a mountain. You have like that. Do the same here. You have a mountain, a valley. And finally, a mountain. So I have like that. To fold and burnish these tabs as well. together, you want to take this tab, like so, and you'll fold it up in that concertina, and then this piece is just going to come over, you've got your concertina there as well, and it will match up to here. You may just need to go back in and make sure those edges are matching up like that. All right? So you can either put uh, red liner tape or I'm going to put glue on here. And I will have to give it a little time to dry. But this is going to give it a lot of strength as well. 
Okay, so again, this is in like that, and this folds down into the concertina, like that. Take this piece and simply fold it over like that. I can go in and apply some pressure with my bone folder. I'm going to set that aside, give it time to take hold, and in the meantime, we'll prepare the roof. And the roof is cut at four and one quarter by five inches, and then simply scored down the middle on the long side. So on the five inch side, I'll do two and a half inches and simply score it down the middle. Fold it and burnish it. Now if you had uh, a plain paper or something that you did not really want to use for the roof, but you had, say, another piece of paper that you wanted to layer it with, then uh, you would need to cut your roof pieces uh, at two and one quarter by four inches. So you would put one of the two and a quarter by four inches on this side and one on that side as well. I'm just going to use that entire thing as my roof. Right, now let's take a look and see how this is doing. It's holding together pretty well. Now, the half inch tab is the top of the house and this is where the roof is going to be attached. The one inch tab is going to go into the inside of the card and be attached there. So make sure that's nice and secure. Find my card back in. And now this going to place my adhesive on the bottom here and here and then of course it'll be on the top as well it's going to go like that right up into the middle of that card right on that crease line like that so I'm going to, again, use my glue. But again, this is some place where you can use your red liner tape, and that will hold very well. So I've got my glue on there. I'm just going to place it in there like so and press down. I also need to decorate. I probably should have done that first, but I can do that while this is still in here though as well. I think I might decorate that while it's, I've got it out here. So I've got these pieces cut for some windows and a door.
need to go back in and glue this once more. And you can have your door on either side. I'm going to have mine facing that way. And it's going to flop around a little bit right now, but that's all right. Because now we're going to put the roof on. And for the roof, we need the adhesive again on the tabs. So we'll have it on this tab here. And what I'm going to do is just line my roof up pretty much with the edge of this mat here. Right. I'm going to put my adhesive on. And this is where it would work really well with the red liner tape because it would be already on there and flat. Take the roof, as I said, place it near to the edge there. Just open it up like that. Flatten it down. Uh -huh. We can do this side next. All we have to do here is the adhesive here and this tab press that down and then on this side on this tab here that over and if you have a mat and or a mat and layer inside and you perhaps it's a dark color and you can't really write a message on it all you have to do is just add your message on here you could cut another piece of white cardstock or you could even mat it as well so five and a half by five and a half or four and a quarter or five and a quarter by five and a quarter something like that and just a place where you could put your message or stamp a sentiment so let's start and open this and now you'll see that your house will pop open so. You can go in there and actually press that down a bit. So that is looking pretty good. I've also cut out some clouds. room for a message here if we like or even to stamp a sentiment on there it folds up does it go past there there's our little pop-up house you add a little sparkle with this spectrum noir sparkle pin just going here just going to add a little 
very shimmer there. You'll see that as it dries. That. I think we'll go inside of these windows. Then I've also got this piece I put on the inside. World moves on and we move with it. This was actually from a Downton Abbey free gift in a card magazine and that was also from Crafter's Companion. Place that there. I'm also going to grab these glossy accents for the glass here, but before I do that, let's bring in a couple of little pearls here, I think I'll put one here as a door handle. For the front of this card, I've got this sentiment, congratulations and celebrations. And all this is, is a sticker that I've then put down on a piece of card. And I'm going to also give it a bit of a lift with some of this tape. I think I'm just going to leave it there, and that is the completed new home house pop-up card. And it really wasn't difficult to do, and that does stand very nicely. Now all I need to do is let my glossy accents dry, and then it would be ready, of course, to post to someone. Thank you so much for joining me and I do hope you enjoyed this uh, little card and that you'll give it a try yourself. It is very difficult as I said and if you're looking for some other inspiration I would invite you to pop over to Iced Images uh, for a look at what she did with this card. She was my inspiration after all and you'll see that she has a gingerbread version in time for Christmas. So I think you might enjoy that. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box below. A shout out also to all my wonderful subscribers. I do so appreciate each and every one of you. If you'd like to leave a comment below, you're welcome to. And be sure that you have hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you again and please stay safe and crafty hugs. Bye.